test, test, test. Testing one, two. Here we go. Good. Testing one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Hello, anybody there? Yep. Uh, no, I've left for the night. I'm a little rich. I'm a little rich on me. So, so that's a little bit better. Yep. Perfect. Right. So you can write me a check. <laughs> I'm not that rich. Well, so. I was wondering if he, uh, you know, had a, a boom day selling uh, insurance or, uh, or struck the mother load. Yep. You know it. Uh, cold weather people have got nothing else to do they've got my insurance I guess so well, according to my wife all the women were out uh, shopping for at the quilt shop today so <laughs> well they gotta they gotta make some quilts to keep themselves warm I guess they don't have enough stocked up <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you all those women at quilt they've got about 40 of them stowed away somewhere <laughs> Well, I'm glad her business is doing well. Who's the uh, ref on the left down there? He's been, ever since I was helping coach girls, he was working, and I still can never think of his name. Uh, I don't know the name. Uh, it's hard to... It's hard I don't to... know the names of any of them. Um... Yeah. And unfortunately, they don't put the names in the program. Well, I knew the one the other night at Abilene because he's uh, my son's two doors down neighbor in Manhattan. So I've seen that red-haired guy on the left before. Yeah, he's like I said, he was reffing when back when I was still coaching girls, but. Did you watch any of that KU Oklahoma State turnover fest last night? I just saw the highlights. For two, well, I know the Hawks aren't ranked anymore, but for two teams of that level, their passing and stuff last night was atrocious. I don't know how many just dumb, dumb turnovers both teams had. <coughs> That's just astounding that Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, and KU, none of them are in the top 25. That's just... Well, they were showing... <laughs> well, it was not only them. They were showing... During that game, they had a, they had a list up there of probably at least a dozen you know, teams. You know, well, like Notre Dame, you know, added to that list. I, I couldn't even tell you all of them. You know, they're usually high-ranking profile teams, and not a one of them are ranked. And so they were blaming it on the lack of crowds. And I'm thinking, with all the talent that KU brings in there, you're telling me that those guys have to have that crowd to uh, be successful? Oh, that's too good. That's just too good. Yeah, it's like in Kentucky, same thing. <coughs> okay, we're going to go Lack live. of a crowd, that's too good. <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome Minneapolis Junior Senior High School fans. Back to the Lions Den here on February 9th, 2021. As we're ready to get going with varsity basketball again after some COVID-19 protocol stuff postponed the last two games for the boys and the last game for the girls. So we got two weeks of basketball coming up, four games, four sets of games. We hope. Yeah under normal circumstances. Uh, starting off tonight with the visiting Bearcats of Ellsworth. The Lady Bearcats uh, hosted the Minneapolis Lions back in December where the boys didn't play due to COVID concerns on the part of the Ellsworth side, but the girls were able to play. This is the 98th game of the series. Minneapolis leads at 53 to 44 at Minneapolis 29 to 19. Minneapolis has won the last four games in a row, including by 45 to 22 at Ellsworth on December 15th. Ellsworth had won the previous five games in a row prior to the current Minneapolis win streak. So it's a 
Well, the series has gone back and forth. It's interesting, though, because this Ellsworth girls team is young, and I mean young. They have one upperclassman on the team. So everyone else is freshmen and sophomores, one upperclassman. So that speaks, uh, that says a lot uh, of what's coming probably for their uh, group, but uh, still, uh, that's a lot of growth, uh, growing pains for a young team. The game in Ellsworth started that fairly close for a quarter and a half or so. Minneapolis pulled away finally to win by 23. Uh, overall, the girls of Ellsworth are three wins with 10 losses. And in league play, they're one win and four losses tied for fifth. Minneapolis is at seven and eight overall. With three wins, two losses in the league for third place. Uh, point averages, uh, Ellsworth has been giving up an average of 44.2. Minneapolis giving up 41.8. However, Ellsworth has only been scoring an average of 27.1, and Minneapolis scoring 42.0. So, who did Ellsworth beat in league? Uh, sorry, Dale. So. I'm sorry, I don't have that info with me. That's okay. Uh, probably. I would assume. I would. Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to say that's what I would assume would oh, be. Oh, Republic County. What is one or the other. No, I didn't know. So. And Ellsworth won their last game versus, which was versus Plainville by nine points back on the first of February. <coughs> of course, your Lady Lions lost 36-33 at Abilene, so they're looking for a bounce back win from there. Lady Lions need to keep uh, getting some wins here to, for their standing in league and also substate substate if we were opening tonight. Minneapolis seventh seed at seven and eight. We would be at Goodland <laughs> at thirteen and two. Ah. So we need to win. There's Russell's at seven and seven. Colby's at eight and seven ahead of us. So. We need a few more wins and a few more losses out of the squad ahead of us. You're, you're saying you don't want to take the scenic drive to beautiful Goodland, Kansas? I don't. I, I only like to go there when I'm traveling <laughs> to Colorado. <laughs> well, you, you know, that's just beyond the oasis on the plains. Yes, I know. <laughs> beautiful mountain sunflower in the region. What else do you want, Dale? A shorter trip. <laughs> We could even leave early and I could take you to Mighty Bird City and we could have a steak at the famous Big Ed. If you're going to drive, I'll be happy to let you do that. <laughs> and I'll be happy to partake of the steak. I'll even buy my own. Time for introductions. By the way, it's Scott Oshman, Dale Henderson, and Dale Leeds here tonight to bring you this game. It's not very often I go and get very many words in to you guys talking so much, and I've got to say much tonight. So, so Minneapolis lead lines in their home white as we're back at home. Ellsworth Lee Bearcats in their traveling black. We'll have the starting lineups in just a second as both squads getting ready to back on the hardwood here in Minneapolis. Uh, good to be back on the floor. Last week, we were supposed to have a busy week, guys. Three games in uh, in five days, and it ended up that we just had the one in Abilene before COVID protocol. So uh, both squads getting ready to go here tonight. Minneapolis Lady Lions against the Ellsworth Lady Bearcats, and here's our starting lineups. For Ellsworth, number three, Natalie Ross, a five foot four junior. A five foot four sophomore Ryan Timbrink. Number ten, Peyton Conrad, a five foot four freshman. Number twelve, a five foot eight sophomore Greta Klein. And a Minneapolis connection here, a five foot five freshman Kylan Turnipseed. You guys know that connection? Okay. So for Minneapolis, number ten. A 5'8 sophomore, Elena Cozart. A number 11, a 5'6 junior, Cameron Cleveland. 
And number 14, a five foot six senior, Peyton Smith. Number 21, a five foot nine senior, Courtney Forte. And freshman, five foot seven, Maggie Shoot, number 33. And a five seven freshman, number 33, Maggie Shoot. So. Ellsworth starts fairly young squad with two freshmen, two sophomores, and a junior as the, uh, as the Minneapolis Lady Lions uh, do start a sophomore and a freshman. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, one junior. Yep, freshman, sophomore, junior, and two seniors. So, so. I have no idea how the JV girls came out. The JV boys won in overtime. So we get ready to go here. So Ellsworth will have the ball to start this out as they will get it at half court. Minneapolis is going to pick them up tight to start this thing. And they do get it in the hands to start out into Conrad. Conrad with the basketball picked up in the man defense by the Lady Lions. Conrad drives to the right hand. She drops down low, pulls it back out, goes and takes the lead. And it's blocked and taken away by by Courtney Forte, back the other direction it goes. Forte with the basketball. Back it goes on the right-hand side to Cozart. Cozart will drive to the left. He the back to the top in the hands of Smith. Smith will work to, to Cleveland. Cleveland will set this back up. Goes back over to in the corners. Minneapolis works a motion on the outside. Back around here to the right-hand side as they continue to work inside, in the out. Finally, we take a drive in by Cleveland off the mark, but rebounded by Forte up and good. Nice job by Courtney Forte to get a rebound and the putback. Minneapolis picks up a four-court press. Conrad with the basketball, picked up by Cozart. Conrad, um, they trap her at the top. They back it away. Conrad, that should be five. Yep. Oh, bails him out with a, with a hand check. And... Cozart gets that. I thought that was a five-second call, Dale. Well, he was uh, getting awfully close. I'm not sure when he picked up the count. But, <coughs> uh, he was, it, it was getting awfully close to five. Good hustle down low by Maggie Shoop, and she will get tied up as they had a person down low. Maggie quickly comes down to pick him up and save it. Tie-up will go back to Minneapolis. as we will now go into the hands of Cleveland to set this up. Cleveland crosses the timeline, gets it to Cozart. Cozart back to Cleveland, Cleveland back to Smith. Smith on the left, back to Cozart, and Cozart to the right as they work it around the top of the key. Goes down low to Forte, Forte back out to Cozart for three, up no good, rebounded by uh, Klein of Ellsworth. Ellsworth will bring it back down to set it up. Conrad with the basketball. They get it over to Timbrink. Timbrink on the right-hand side. Back it goes to Klein. Klein goes down low and stood over the top. It'll be off of, so actually not touched, not, not touched, out of bounds, back to Minneapolis. Turnover here on the Lady Bearcats. Good defense by Minneapolis. Two to nothing, Lady Lions with the early lead. Shoop on the right-hand side. Shoop will drive, picks it up, goes back to top to Smith, back over to top as they work it around. Peyton drives, gets it back to Forte, back it goes to Shoop, back to Cleveland. Zone defense by Ellsworth. Yeah, they're in a 3-2 uh, right now, Scott. They saw the uh, Evelyn take, huh? Shoop will drive, gets it back to Cleveland for three, up and not the mark, rebounded by Ellsworth. Ellsworth back the other direction. And they're having a hard time getting it inside at all. Um, Ellsworth on the defensive side. All back on the outside, it goes Conrad. They will drop it down low to, uh, it's going to be tipped out of bounds, it's actually dribble out of bounds off a of turnip seed. It'll be back to Minneapolis. And look here, Maddie Lane. Mm -hmm. Not seen Maddie in a while, so it's good to see her back on the floor as she checks in for Cozart. It's been a while since Maddie's been uh, been back. So, so shoot with the basketball, gets it over to Smith. Smith quickly goes down low to Forte, and she's going to get hand checked, and it'll be Minneapolis ball underneath their own bucket. So. 
Nice quick pass. You know, uh, H, I've, I've talked about this before. Uh, you've got to have quick passes, and that was a good one right there. Good inlet pass quickly off the glass and good by Cleveland on the inbounds as Cleveland gets her first points of the night. But back to those quick passes, we've got to have them because that's the only way in this zone you're going to be able to break through. Yeah, uh, that or you've got to be able to get in, uh, you know, in the gaps in between two defenders, you know, and uh, make them make a decision about which one's going to take you. Ellsworth with the basketball. Rolfs will drive. Tries the right hand side. Gets it back to the top two. Turnip seed. Turnip seed will drive. Picks up her dribble. Um, looks for a cutter. Good hands right there by Cleveland, but Ellsworth does get it back, and then they get the. Back three-point shot is up, and it's no good. Rebounded by Lang. Lang with the basketball. Back it goes to Cleveland. Four to nothing. Lady Lions to the lead. 4-11 here in the first. Lang with the basketball. Quickly goes inside to Forte. Forte takes a drive in, and she'll get fouled, and she will go to the line. A little bit of a mismatch right there. The uh, outside on that 3-2 dropped down, and uh, Forte didn't have, definitely had the position on her. Uh, as number three, Rolfs, gets the foul. Forte at the line. First shot is up and good. <clears throat> Five to nothing, Lady Lions with the lead. 4.06 here in the first. Second free throw getting ready to come. Shot is up and it is good. She makes them both. And Ellsworth is going to call a timeout to talk about this. Six to nothing here in Minneapolis. 4.06 left to go in the first. We will take a real quick break and hear a word from our sponsors. We'll be back in 30. You're listening to Minneapolis High School Sports on CityLink TV. When it's go time, your local Pioneer team is with you from the word go every step of the way. With high-performing Pioneer brand products and local insights, they'll help you choose a lineup of products tailored to your fields and proven just down the road. See Sheldon Doherty at River Hill C about those Pioneer brand products. And go Lions. See American Family Insurance Agent Scott Osherman for all your insurance coverage under one roof. The Scott Osherman Agency with locations in Minneapolis and Belleville proudly supporting the Minneapolis High School Lions. Welcome back to Minneapolis High School as Lady Lions has a 6-0 lead here. Minneapolis drops back into a zone. As Ellsworth will drop down, kicks it back to the top of the key in the top to Conrad. Conrad, a uh, nice job by, uh, by the Lady Lions there. Three-point shot is up off the mark, but they get their own rebound and will pull it back out to set it up. Drives in and kicks it out to Turnip Seed. Back to Conrad. Conrad back to Turnip Seed. Turnip Seed looks down low as... And then stolen away by Minneapolis. Cleveland with the basketball. And that's going to be a foul by number five, Tim Brink. Getting ready to check in will be Emma Moore, a five-foot-two freshman. So another freshman checking in for Ellsworth. Minneapolis gets um, a shoot back in uh, as she comes in for Smith. Oh, I don't, if my eyes didn't see me, Scott, we were actually in a, uh, I think, a 1-3-1 one, one zone. I, that I thought we were, too. I, I don't recall us ever doing that before. Yeah. Kind of thought the same thing for a minute, but I thought, well, I've not seen that in a while, but, hey, that's all right. A little different look, and it's not a bad idea. They may have gotten an idea from Abilene on that, uh, having Kozo at the top with some long arms uh, to get those passing across from the top. So, uh, interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, because we sure struggle down there, you know, with uh, with their length at the top. And if you've got that kind of player on a 1-3-1, uh, it's a really effective defense. Ellsworth to inbounds, and they get it into the hands of uh, Timbrink, Peyton Timbrink. Um, and they will go across, and that's going to be tipped out of bounds. That'll be Minneapolis basketball. Um, actually thrown out of bounds. Sorry about that. So... Fifth turnover on... Bearcats. Six to nothing still. 2.49 left to go in the first. Cleveland with the basketball. Back to back to uh, Lang. Lang back down low. Great pass down to Forte. And she gets it off the glass. I was a little bit nervous about that. She was so open. She had great position, great feed. And she puts it in. Shoot with the feed. And she finishes it down low. 
Timrick with the basketball. She's picked up by Maddie Lang. Timrick will drive in. Gets it back out in the outside to Moore. Moore quickly out to the other Timrick, and they're going to tip it down low and throw it out of bounds. Minneapolis basketball. So Peyton Smith will check in for Minneapolis for Courtney Forte. Right now, Ellsworth is uh, really struggling to uh, get even a remote uh, look at the bucket. Uh, our defense has got them completely yep. stymied at this time. <laughs> Good call by the official, and uh, Maggie Shoup smiles and knows it wholeheartedly. She, uh, she drug an extra foot on that one, and she gets whistled with the travel. Um, so... Ellsworth with the basketball. They try to trap. They Oh, great job by Lang, and it's going to be stolen away by Cleveland back the other direction. Maddie Lang reaches it nicely, and then we give the favor right back to him, and they get the steal back the other direction. Ball in the hands of Rolfs. Rolfs will have the ball tipped out of Minneapolis. It'll be Ellsworth basketball. Ellsworth looking for their first points. Minneapolis up 8 to nothing here. 151 here in the first. Checking back in. Uh, is uh, Kylan Turnipseed as well as number 21 for Minneapolis, Courtney Forte. Cleveland will come out. Ellsworth will inbounds. And they get it at the top into the hands of Rolfs. Rolfs to set this up for Ellsworth. And she... <laughs> There's five. There is five. Thank you very much. I had six, but there is five. <laughs> five second violation. I kept thinking, okay, that's five. That's five. <laughs> I've got a real quick five, though, Dale. So, especially when it's against the other team. Your quick draw. So, Minneapolis with the basketball as they get it to Peyton Smith. Peyton back to top. It goes to Cozart. Cozart back to shoot. Back to Cozart. Back to Smith. Smith. Cozart. Cozart back to shoot. They look for the cutter. They go down immediately in the post to Forte. Off the glass, no good. But she uh, uh, rebound is picked up by Shoop. She misses, and then Ellsworth comes away with the rebound. Back in the hands of uh, Peyton Timbrink. Uh, she picks up and goes down, and that's going to be out of bounds off Minneapolis. It'll be Ellsworth basketball. 106 left to here in the first. Lady Lions with the 8-0 lead. Checking back in for Minneapolis is number 11, Cameron Cleveland, as she checks in for the Lady Lions. So, Ellsworth to inbounds underneath their own bucket. As they go to the top in the hands of Peyton Timbrick, back it goes to the other Timbrick, as that is Ryan. And they drop it down low. Good pass down low to turn up seat. Off the mark and rebounded by, by Forte. Back it goes the other direction. Nice job by Forte. She may have had a piece of that on the block. Back it goes in the hands of Peyton Smith. Peyton. Goes down low to Forte, off the glass. Can't get it, but gets her own rebound. Kicks it back out to Cleveland for three. It's good. Nice job by Minneapolis. They get it in that low block. She was double teamed down there. She quickly saw Cleveland out on the left wing, and Cleveland drains a three. 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. Ellsworth has a double team at the top. They get it in the hands of Turnip Seed. Turnip Seed with 22 seconds, 11-0 Minneapolis lead. Back in the goes to Peyton. Timbrick. Peyton will drive in and she's going to get a hand check by Cleveland and that will uh, give it Ellsworth the basketball hmm, underneath their own bucket. 11 0, 14.8 seconds. Ryan Timbrick to inbounds for Ellsworth <clears throat> and they get it in. Great job by Shoop. Shoop's got uh, numbers behind her. She gets back to Cozart. Cozart, nine seconds back to Cleveland. Cleveland, back it goes to, goes to Forte. Forte gets a glass, and it's good. Nice job by the Lady Lions as they get it in at the buzzer. Nice job by Minneapolis to get it down low to Courtney Forte, and Courtney puts it off the glass. It rolled up there for a second, Dale, but she dropped in. 13 to nothing, Minneapolis. It had its second thoughts about going in. <laughs> Lady Lions had the lead at the end of one, 13-0. We'll take a break. You're listening to Minneapolis High School Basketball on CityLink Minneapolis. We'll be right back. Wilson Family Funeral Home, our family serving your family. Todd, Shelley, Landon, and Reese Wilson proudly support the activities of the Minneapolis Junior Senior High School students. Go, Minneapolis Lions.
<laughs> Help us co-op continue to work hard each and every day to provide you the best products and services in the area. Serving Central and North Central Kansas with grain, sales, and storage, seed sales and service, agronomy, and livestock needs. The Delphus Co-op staff will help you sort through the many options available for your farming operation. Call 785-523-213 to learn more. Delphus Co-op, serving you since 1901. <coughs> Welcome back to... Minneapolis High School as the Lady Lions come out with a nice first quarter, guys. 13-0, great defense uh, and uh, nice, uh, I would call inside-outside play, Dale. They uh, got it down low in the post, and we scored some. We also kicked it back out, so yeah, nice very, job. Yeah, very much uh, you know, doing a nice job of getting the ball to Courtney down on the block. And stolen away by Shoup, and Shoup gets it back to Cleveland. Nice job by Lady Lions on the double team. Ball goes back out to Cozart, back over to Peyton Smith. Peyton back to Cleveland. Cleveland back to Cozart. Cozart looks at the high post. They had nothing. They pull it back. Back it goes. They're working around. Back to Shoop. Shoop on the right-hand side. Back it goes to Smith. Smith goes to the high post. And she'll take that shot as Shoop, and she drains it from the free throw line. Maggie was wide open at the high post, and she put it in the free throw line. Nice shot by Maggie Shoop. Ball goes back to Ellsworth. Conrad with the basketball. Minneapolis looks at a double team. They pull it back. Uh, Ellsworth's got some numbers down. They pull it back. And they'll take the three-point shot. Uh, no good. And rebounded by... Um, oh, wow. Uh, they said Turnip Seed stepped out of bounds on that. Um, and that'll be Minneapolis basketball. 15-0. Lady Lions with... The lead here in the second quarter. If you're just joining us, Lady Lions had a 13 0 lead at the end of one. Peyton Smith will drive in, kicks back out to Cozart for three, up, and it's good. As Cozart drains a three from the right hand side, as both Cozart and Cleveland have hit threes tonight, 18 0. Ellsworth's going to call another timeout. Nice job by the Minneapolis of breaking that zone, and they uh, um, have done a nice job with ball movement so far tonight, Bill. Yeah, that last time, uh, that was, uh, you know, found a uh, one really, I think, soft spot in the 3-2. Uh, got the ball inside to Maggie right there at the free throw line. And, uh, you know, when you are able to do that, there's absolutely nobody behind. And I think she was in shock when she turned around and saw that there was nothing between her and the bucket but air and uh, was able to get the shot off and, uh, and drain it. Well, exciting way to open the game. 18-0 to zero at uh, 6.40 to go here in the second quarter. I hope for the Bearcats' sake they can start to get some points in the bucket sometime soon. Well, the girls are doing a nice job with ball movement as well as um, uh, defensive as well. I've, I've been impressed with uh, their intensity, and we just need to keep it up um, against this Ellsworth team. Right. So. Well, it's also obvious that, you know, Ellsworth's a uh, really young, 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 young team, yeah. you know, uh, is really struggling. Yeah, and, and any time you have such a young team, you're going to, you're building for the future, and that's exactly what they're doing here. Ellsworth with the basketball, they pick it up. Conrad with the basketball. She'll take the shot. She's left wide open. Off the mark, rebounded by Forte. Forte goes up in the air and gets it, gets it down to Cleveland. Cleveland back the other direction. Gets it back to Peyton Smith. Peyton will drive in. Great pass down low to Shoup. Can't get it, but she gets her own rebound. And she'll put it back up, and she's going to whistle with the travel. Great pass down low from Peyton Smith to Shoup. Use the glass. <laughs> Uh, okay, but I'm going to give the freshman a little bit of credit on this one because that's a tough shot in front of the glass like that. That is, that's a tough one to put over and in. I'm going to give the freshman a little bit of grace right. on that. Okay. So you guys can argue with me later. Back it goes to Conrad for Ellsworth. Ellsworth with the basketball. Conrad picks up her dribble, gets it back and talk to Peyton Timberley. Um, Peyton with the basketball back. It goes over to Rolfs. Rolfs back to Timbrink. Timbrink for three. Up in. It's no good. Rebounded by Cleveland. Cleveland come back to the other direction. 18 to nothing. Lady Lions with the lead. 547 here in the quarter. Back it goes in the corner to Minneapolis as Maddie Kruger is in for the first time tonight. Um, back 
It goes to Peyton Smith. Ball goes into the high post. Back it goes to Peyton Smith. Peyton will drive. Quick shot up and good. Nice shot by Peyton Smith to see that. Takes the drive and puts it in. Great job by the senior Peyton Smith. Her first points of the night, I think. Yes. Yes. Ball goes back to Conrad to set it up for Ellsworth. Back in that one, uh, that one three. This time it is Kruger at the top. And they'll take the three off the mark, rebounded by Peyton Smith. Peyton back to Cleveland. Cleveland back the other direction. She gets it up to Lang. Lang down. Great pass to Kruger off the glass and good. Maddie Lang got into trouble down there, and she quickly got that pass off. Great job by Maddie Lang. Great finish by Kruger. Uh, to see the floor on that one, 22 to nothing, Lady Lions in control. Ball goes back over here to to uh, to, uh, to turnip seat. Turnip seat tries to get it down low to Conrad. It's tipped out of bounds. Minneapolis will get a couple players in as they bring in um, um, Cozart and Shoop, and they will sit down Cleveland and Forte. So Ellsworth gets a couple more players in for the first time. Allison Rodriguez, a freshman, and also uh, Greta Klein checks back in. Kruger back to, oh, great anticipation by Ellsworth. They may get their first points of the night, and they're fouled. They will go to the line. Um, So that will send, uh, let's see, Rawls to the line to shoot two. Hells were trying to get on the board for the first time. 22 nothing. Minneapolis with the lead. So, shot is up, and it's good. The saran wrap is still around the basketball goal. <laughs> and so, it's, so far, Hells has not been able to get anything to fall. So, I think it's a little uh, thicker than uh, <laughs> saran wrap. wrap. It yeah. might be uh, inch thick uh, plexiglass. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Second shot is up, and it's off the mark as well. Rebounded by Cleveland. Back it goes the other direction. Cleveland back to Lang, and that's going to be a turnover back to Ellsworth. And that will be a tip by Shoup. And Shoup will pick up a a foul there. I think that's number two on her maybe. I'm I'm not sure. Number three. Four? Shoot. Okay. No, that's no. her second. Second, okay. I must have missed one somewhere. I only had her for one, but so, so uh, shoot will come out as Forte will come back in. Also coming back in is for the first time is number three, Jordan Peck uh, comes in for the Minneapolis Lady Lions. Um, so I think this is the first time I've seen Jordan Peck on the floor for a varsity game, guys. Uh, there was one other one that uh, I remember. I think it was down at the Breen tournament okay. that she uh, made the floor. Great job by Cleveland to pick a pocket. She'll go in on the left-hand side, and she'll get fouled going the line. And uh, uh, she will go the line to shoot two. Great job of picking the pocket at the top of the key. Minneapolis will go the line to shoot two here. Foul is on Rolfs, um, her second personal. So Cleveland, to the strike. Cleveland at the line, up and good. So she'll have another one coming here. Second shot is up, and she gets them both to fall. 24 to nothing, Lady Lions with the lead. 348 left to go here in the first. Uh, in the in the hands of Rawls to set this up as she goes back to Moore. Moore goes down low and it's tipped out of bounds off of Minneapolis. Close steal by Cleveland and Peck and uh, it will go back. Uh, Jordan Peck, a five foot seven sophomore for the Lady Lions. They will quickly get it in. Ellsworth does the top back to uh, back to Rawls. Off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Cleveland. Cleveland's gotten some rebounds tonight, guys. I've got her for three now. I don't know what Dale's got. Uh, I just keep total total cumulative individual. So also checking in for the first time tonight is 5'4", Junior Carly Thrush as she checks in the ballgame. As she checks in for Cozart, or excuse me, Kruger. Ellsworth basketball. 3'19", left to go here in the the first half. 24 to nothing. Lady Lions with the lead. 
Ball back to, over to turnip seed. Turnip seed on the left hand side. Um, goes back to Rawls. Rawls on the right. And she will drive in. Great screen there. And it's blocked partly and then picked up by Forte. Back to Cleveland. Cleveland will bring it down. Gets it over to Peck. Peck on the left hand side. Peck back to Cleveland. Cleveland will take the shot up. No good. And rebounded by Rodriguez. Back it goes to Ellsworth in the hands of Rolfs. 2.43 here in the first. Lee Lyons in control. Rolfs will drive to the right hand side, pulls it back, and gets it over to, and stolen away by Cleveland. That wasn't even the pass. That was uh, easily stolen away by, uh, by Forte. Hard to even say that's a steal, guys. Peck down low to Forte in the glass, up and good. Nice job by Peck. Finished by Forte. Lady Lions with the lead. Forte has got 10 points. Great pass by Peck. Great finish by Forte. 26-0. Ellsworth with the basketball. Okay, cross. Uh, Rawls will drive in, and she will get fouled by Lang. Uh, <laughs> I like Maddie Lang. Maddie's just like, bring it in. Just come right into my house. Just come right in here. I will show you. <laughs> right in the bench from us. I am going to. Well, not even been on the bench. She's been sick or gone. Well, so. she's been here. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. I'm going to play some ball. <laughs> so good for Maddie. Free throw is up, and Ellsworth. Oh, they had their first points of the night. I was going to say, how many times have you seen a basketball game where they've not scored in either quarter, but first or second? But uh, Ellsworth breaks that curse. They get their first points of the night 26 to 1. So, second shot is up, and she gets them both. And also checking in for the first time for Ellsworth is Isabel Lindsley, a five foot ten freshman. So uh, Ellsworth uh, playing playing deep in their bench. Uh, Cozart with the basketball. Um, Ellsworth uh, and the turnover at the top. I will tell you guys, we have had more turnovers than I'd like. Eight of them. Yeah. Eight, yeah. I agree with so, yeah. so. <laughs> And I get a thumbs up from H. Thank you, H. 26-2, Lady Lions in control. Um, Ellsworth will drive it in into the hands of Conrad. Conrad picks up her dribble. They get back to Timbrick. Great pass. Shot up, no good. Rebounded by Peck. Peck back out to, uh, to Cozart. Cozart up to Thrush. Thrush Back to Peck. Peck back to Smith. Smith on the left-hand side. Cross goes to Cozart. Goes down low to Forte. Off the glass and good. Nice job, Forte. Just showing some dominance tonight. Um, there's, uh, She's got some power down there, and she's not got anybody that's really matching her size-wise. It may be height-wise, but just not physical-wise. No, no double, triple teams. Yeah, I was going to say, she's definitely uh, you know got a height advantage tonight. And, uh, you know, as you said, Dale, you know, they're not dropping in to help on her at all. So she's pretty well uh, having her way in there. So Minneapolis will pick up the foul. And that is on Carly Thrush, her first personal foul. And checking in for Thrush will be Shoop. Lindsley. A freshman for Ellsworth at the line. First shot is up. No good. And gets the rebound is Shoop. Back to Cozart. They pick her up high uh, in that high zone. They're, they are spreading out their zone, Dale. Trying to cut off that high pass. <clears throat> and stolen away is Turnipsey with the steal. So, turn of Siebel drive to the right-hand side. One thing that you're, you're going to see Ellsworth get better throughout the years with this many freshmen playing varsity basketball. All back in the hands of Tim Brink. Tim Brink will drive and stolen away by Peyton Smith. Nice job by Peyton. 13 seconds left, 28-2. to two. Peyton will drive, gets it back to Cozart. Cozart, seven seconds. Back it goes to Cozart. Cozart back to... Forte, Forte, off the glass and good. Nice job. Forte, I don't, I don't know that anybody else saw it. Forte did see it to take it in. 
Uh, great finish right there. Forte drives around, puts it in. 30-2 to two is your halftime score. Minneapolis outscoring them 17-2 to two in that quarter. Great job by the Lady Lions. We'll take a break and hear a word from our sponsors. Then we'll be back with some stats and some comments. You're listening to Minneapolis High School Basketball on CityLink TV Minneapolis as well as tape-delayed Eagle Communication Channel 20. We'll be right back. Hometown Outdoor Power with the locations in Minneapolis, Salina, and McPherson has been serving Central Kansas for over 20 years and is the largest power equipment dealer in the area. We strive to be the one-stop shop for all your power equipment needs. We provide full sales, service, and part supply for your home, ag, or commercial contractor to power equipment needs. Ask about our winter service program and go Lions! Messenger Clothing Company with locations in Minneapolis and Salina. Designers of custom clothing for your team, business, or for event, for screen printing and embroidery. We feature online design and ordering for your convenience. Contact us at 785-823-7752 or by email sales at messengerclothingcompany.com for all your customer clothing printing needs today. Go Minneapolis Lions! When it's go time, the local Pioneer team is with you for the word go every step of the way. With high performing Pioneer brand products and local insight, they'll help you choose the lineup of products tailored to your fields and proven just down the road. See Sheldon Doherty at River Hill C about this Pioneer brand product. And go Lions! See American Family Insurance agent Scott Austin for all your insurance coverage under one roof. Scott Austin Agency with locations in Minneapolis and Belleville, proudly supporting the Minneapolis High School Lions. Wilson Family Funeral Home, our family serving your family. Todd, Shelley, Landon, and Reese Wilson proudly support the activities of the Minneapolis Junior Senior High School students. Go Minneapolis Lions! Our halftime gathering here to talk about what happened in the first half. The Lady Lions lead 30 to 2 against a young, young Elton Lady Girl Cat squad. Outscoring the 13 to 0 in the first quarter, 17 to 2 in the second quarter. On my overall group stats, uh, Minneapolis out rebounded the Bearcats 14 to 7. Turnovers wise, we had more than I like at 9. Bearcats had 15. They kind of settled down in the second quarter. They were really turning them over quite a bit in the first quarter and early second. They kind of settled down as the game was wearing on in the second quarter. Dale's got some stats for it. Well, I'll start with uh, Ellsworth tonight because that'll be uh, an easy one. <laughs> uh, their leading scorer at halftime with with uh, two is Natalie Rolfs. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for them, that's that's the extent of their of their scoring. Uh, as they really, really struggled uh, against every defense we threw at them. Uh, for Minneapolis... Uh, leading scorer at halftime <coughs> is Courtney Forte with 14. Uh, the Lions have done a really nice job of getting the ball to her inside against the, uh, the zone. And uh, you know, with her size advantage, she's really taking advantage of that uh, to pump in those 14 points. Cameron Cleveland has seven. Uh, Lena Cozart uh, has three. Uh, Maddie Kruger, Peyton Smith, and Maggie Shoup each have two. Uh, free throw shooting. I have the Lady Lions four for four, while Ellsworth is shooting two out of four. And I agree with you on the uh, the turnovers, Dale. Uh, you know, for the type of uh, defense that I felt like Ellsworth was playing, that's way too many turnovers for us. And uh, conversely, uh, as you said, uh, they kind of settled down that second quarter and and didn't turn the ball over nearly as much, but uh, you know, our defense has done a nice job of, of forcing them into uh, those 15 turnovers. How many rebounds did you have for uh, Courtney? 
Uh, for Courtney, I've got her for four. I was impressed with our defense. I thought uh, changing it up a little bit, a little different look, uh, a couple different times. But I felt like our defense did a nice job <coughs> of uh, preventing any movement at all. Like we said earlier, they are a young team, so <coughs> you do expect to see some turnovers. But uh, overall, I thought our defense did well, even uh, even against the, the caliber that they're playing tonight. Right. Uh, you know, like I said, I was. You know, of course, uh, the one v one was is a defense that is uh, very close to my you know, my heart. Uh, you know, that was the prime defense that I employed most of my years of coaching, and you know, had uh, yeah, I guess in my humble opinion, pretty good success with it. Uh, I just think there's a lot of things you can do with it, and with some of the personnel we have, uh, you know, I think it really you know kind of fits these girls because. Uh, you know, like you say, you put Elena Kozoff out there. She's got a lot of length. Uh, even when, you know, Matty Kruger uh, is, a, is also a, a good at that uh, point on that with her length and, you know, her ability. You know, she could play that all night long and never get tired with her uh, cross-country uh, background. Uh, so I thought, you know, our girls, for, for not having used her before, uh, did a nice job with her. It's definitely a different look, <coughs> something we've not seen all year and other teams have not seen. Um, you know, and Abilene really, when we played Abilene, it really wasn't a true 1-3-1, one, one, but that there was more of a 3-2, but that person in the middle of that 3-2 was up higher um, a lot of times, and, and it really gave us some difficulties in Abilene. Yeah, as, and, we, yeah. as we know, we had a, I don't know how many turnovers we had, you know, just trying to make our cross-court pass, you know, to move the ball, which you want to try to do against the zone, and uh, so, yeah, like we said, it's it can be a, re, a very effective uh, defense uh, with, with, the, with the right personnel. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Lady Lions had the lead 30-2 to two at the half. Uh, good first half of basketball. Uh, it's about two minutes and 40 seconds away from the start of the second half. We'll take a break, hear a word from our sponsors. We'll be back in about two minutes, folks. You're listening to Minneapolis High School Basketball on CityLink TV, Minneapolis, as well as Tape Delayed on Eagle Communication Channel 20. We'll be right back. Hometown Hardware with Ann Barker and Vicki Coffin. I know a company of Delta, Jim Clark, Sunflower Realty, Bonnie Nelson, for a shopping commercial, Greg Harris, Lindsay Creek Feeder, Perry Owens, Manager, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Back Pit Road, Purple Nail Studio with Alexis Kahn. DNA Body Shop, Ron Wright. LaGrange Supply of Scott Mortimer. Klein Oil Company of Delphus, Jim Klein. Minneapolis Muffler and Pipe with John Blake. The Bennington State Bank in Minneapolis and Salina. Hometown Hardware with Pam Barker and Vicki Kaufman. El Hoyo 19 Restaurant with Ed and Brian Bowles. No place like home cook shop with Carolee Austin. He's on Sherry Berkman. The heat is Mexican Restaurant with Cisco Gallardo. Welcome back this week. Get ready for the second half action. Guys, from what I understand, the games from uh, last week, the work play, are officially canceled. They won't be made up. So, the two games from last week, that was Sacred Heart and... Sacred Heart girls and boys, and then the boys versus Republic County. Republic County. They will not be made up. Either, That's interesting. Either one of them? From what I understand, Republic County boys have several games to play, make up already. And uh, Ellsworth, or Sacred Heart, has got uh, three games per week scheduled for the next few weeks. So. 
Well, I had seen where the uh, you know, Republic County game had been canceled. Uh, the last I had seen the uh, Sacred Heart one had only been postponed, but you probably have uh, well, that's further information than I, I have. I didn't get officially from the AD, but that's what I heard from another fairly reliable source. Line of connections. That remains uh, anonymous due to uh, not being able to uh, publicly speak. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I, I just don't want to name this. <laughs> his source, his source, you know. Just so you know, it's not me. So, 30 to 2, we get ready to start the second half. Lady Lions with the lead, and uh, the officials are just walking in the walking in the gym, and the girls are on the floor ready to go. So, oh hey, we gave hey, you the two minute we, warning. We got it. We've got a. We've got a. We've got to talk here. We got to officiate this ball game. So, <coughs> so, so uh, same starting lineups for the Lady Lions to start this out, as Cleveland will set it up. Cleveland with the basketball, they will try to trap at the top. They get to Cozart, back to Cleveland. Cleveland up. To Smith, Smith back to Cleveland, um, and good, good hustle defense by Ellsworth, and uh, and I would agree with you on that. Um, um, she's uh, uh, Natalie Rawls getting upset because she had a little bit of uh, roughness in there, but Cleveland did get an elbow in there. Ball goes to the outside to shoot. Shoot will take the shot. She drives in, rebounded by Ellsworth. Ellsworth picked up their defense a little bit on that uh, first drive. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally different look. Uh, they were their top two girls were out uh, trying to double team everywhere they went. Rebound after the miss by Forte. Back it goes. Cleveland. Oh, yep. Good call. So, um, as you said, Dale, they come up. They try to trap right about uh, right about the uh, the spike line on the volleyball court. And uh, they uh, they do a nice job of coming up there and trying to trap that. So a little different look. So um, ball goes back into Ellsworth's hands. Klein back to Rawls. Rawls will drive. Gives it back to <clears throat> back to Turnip Seed. Turnip Seed, and she will have it stolen away by Cleveland in the hands of Forte. Back it goes to Cozart. Cozart back to Forte. Back to Cleveland. Smith with the basketball. She'll drive in. Gets it back out to the outside. Swing pass over to Cozart for three. Off the mark. And rebounded by. And it's going to be. Ooh. Oh, I saw that. Off Elena's fingertips. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so. Uh, they're gonna uh, they're gonna give it back to Minneapolis. Uh, I would agree. Coach yep. Cravens is a little uh, frustrated with that one. So he had a, he had the same angle we did. But hey, ball goes back. Swing pass all the way over to Smith. Smith back to shoot. Shoot on the right hand side. Back to Cleveland. Back to Smith. Smith looks at the high post and has it nearly stolen away. Good job by Ellsworth defense. They get it down low to Cozart. Uh, can't get it, and it's going to be rebounded by Turnipseed. Turn see will bring him back the other direction for Ellsworth. Uh, top of the key it goes. She'll work around <coughs> Cleveland. And so near steal. Now um, she cannot. She tipped that ball back in and she stepped that mound. She cannot. Can she pick that up ball up first, Dale? Yeah, if she reestablishes position, she can. Okay. Uh, but she has to definitely... Uh, establish her position back on the court before she does. Yeah. Wasn't sure on that. Uh, Ellsworth with the outside shot miss. Rebounded by Cozart. Cozart back the other direction. Neither team scored yet here in the first two minutes of the second half. Forte with the basketball. Back it goes to Cleveland for three. Up and good. There's our first points of the second half. A three from the top of the key. 33-2. 529 here in the second quarter, third quarter. Ellsworth has had a couple shots. They just haven't gone in as most of their shots tonight, all their shots tonight. Ellsworth will get it down low. Shot is up, and they get their first field goal of the night, and that's by Timbrink, Ryan Timbrink, as she drops in uh, one from the outside. 33-4. to four. Peyton Smith down low to Forte, and it's stolen away by Ellsworth. Ellsworth defense a little bit more intense. I think they got an earful in the first half. Stolen away by... Cleveland back the other direction with her left hand. Can't get it, but Smith with the rebound. 
And Smith will pull it back down. Back it goes. They set this up. Shoot at the top of the key. Shoot back to uh, Cleveland. Cleveland. As they will work around the top. Back to Smith. Smith back to Cozart. Down low. And good. Oh, nice work by Forte. But good defense by Ellsworth to force another the turnover. Rolls with the basketball. Picks up her dribble. Gets it back on the outside to Ryan Timrick. Uh, she will drive in and take the shot. No good. And gets her own rebound. As Turner seat gets a rebound. And she'll be fouled by Cozart. Um, much better hustle by Ellsworth here in the second half, Dale. Yes. Uh, you know, they switched their defense up a little bit. Uh, you know, that first half they were playing at 3-2. And I thought we were very soft in it. They've come out uh, this half with more of a 2-3 uh, look. And uh, those top two girls are, are really hustling and uh, putting an awful lot of pressure on our ball handling on the outside. Yeah, it seems like, uh, and that's, uh, but the, but on that 2-3, two, <clears throat> those two down, those two outside are doing a nice job of collapsing when the ball comes in to the low post when they try to get it down the forte. We've turned the ball over a few times on that. So, yeah, their defense has definitely picked it up. Yeah, the, what's coming out of that, you know, they're able to uh, actually get a little help on, on uh, Courtney, you know, where I was out of that 3-2. Uh, you know, they, she was basically playing, you know, one-on-one the whole first half, and uh, now she's finding a little bit more traffic in there. At the same time, I think, you know, that intensity on their defense is also carried over to the offensive end uh, because they've had a lot more, they're a lot more aggressive at uh, taking the ball to the hoop uh, this half as well. So a little bit of confusion on uh, by the officials on, I guess, who is shooting. I, I believe it is turnip seed. I think yes. she was down there. And she yes. was the one that she was the one, she was the one that got the uh, offensive rebound and uh, went went back up with it. So um, unless they're saying it was on the floor, but I it was it was a shooting foul. So I don't know. if Shoot was trying to argue argue the case down there. I'm not sure what it was, but they do give turnip seed the two shots here. And the first one's up and good. So, 33 to 5. Um, 409 here in the third quarter. Second shot is up and off the mark and rebounded by Forte with the help of Lang. Cleveland with the basketball. Cleveland back to Forte. Forte over to Shoop. Shoop back out. It goes to Cleveland. Cleveland will drive from the free throw line up and good. Nice shot, Cameron Cleveland. The nice little shot, uh, dribble drive, takes a shot from the free throw line. Nice finish by Cleveland as she's got a quiet 12 points I see on the board. Wow. Ends the 3-0 run for the Lady Bearcats. So the shot is off the mark, rebounded by Forte. Forte back to Cleveland. 35-5, to Cleveland with the basketball. Um, back it goes to Forte. Forte back to shoot. Shoot. Will drive. Gets back to Cleveland. Cleveland back over to Cozart. Cozart looks down. Has nothing. Goes to Lang. Lang pulls it back out to Cleveland. Cleveland back to Shoop. Shoop. Drive in. Kicks back over to Cozart. Cozart back to Cleveland. Cleveland with 306. Lang with the basketball on the right hand side. 35 to 5. Lady Lions with the lead. And the basketball. Shoop back to Cleveland. A little soft pass. Gets it back out to Lang. <clears throat> Lang back to Cozart. As they work around, they try to get the high post. They drop it down low. It's going to be tipped out of bounds. As they try to run a little X down there, and it will go out of bounds. Back it goes. Stays with Minneapolis. Checking in will be Peyton Smith for Elena Cozart. <clears throat> Minneapolis to inbound. Smith gets it to Forte. Forte in the paint. Up no good. And that's going to be a foul on Shoop over the back. So third personal foul on Shoop. 245 here in the third quarter. All in the hands of Rolfs. Rolfs will drive. And she backs it away, keeps her dribble going, picks up her dribble, looks down low, and stolen away by Smith after the tip by Forte. Back it goes. Cleveland with the basketball. Cleveland back to Forte. Forte back to Smith. 
Smith back to Cleveland. 218 as they work around in a steal as they try to go back the other direction. Timrick up and good on the left hand side with the right hand. Finishes. Ellsworth has five points in this third quarter. Actually, it both, you know, both teams scoring five. So Smith back to shoot. Shoot back to Cleveland. Cleveland back to Lang. Lang will take the shot. No good. And rebounded by Ellsworth. Ellsworth with the basketball in the hands of Rolfs. Rolfs on the right hand side. She will pull it back. She'll take the three off the mark. Rebound by Forte. Great position by Courtney Forte. And she gets the rebound back to Smith. Back to Forte. 127. Shoot will drive. And she'll get fouled. Just the second team foul of the second half. It'll be Minneapolis basketball underneath their own bucket. Peyton Smith will pull the trigger. Forte. And then Cozart getting ready to check in. She checks in for Cleveland. So on the floor is Peyton Smith, Forte, um, Cozart, Lang, and Shoup. And checking back in for Ellsworth is um, is uh, Turnip Seed. On the floor with her is uh, Moore, Rolfs. Um, i get you the rest of them. Nice inlet pass to Forte. Off the glass, no good. Smith gets the rebound and the putback. Nice job, Peyton Smith. Hey, Dale, she used the glass on that one. All right. <laughs> so, nice job. Peyton Smith gets a good rebound and puts it back in. And she will go to the line for the end one. The glass is your friend. Free throws up and good. Wow. As Minneapolis has the 38-7 to lead, 119. That was a dart. Just a tad bit. Mm-hmm. Just a tad bit flat. But hey, it went in. It can. Ross with the basketball. They get it back over to the left hand side to uh, Peyton Timbrink. And they try to go down low, and it's going to be a foul. Shoot four gets number four. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> shoot will come out as Cleveland checks in. So. Shot on the inlet, no good. Rebounded by by Minneapolis. Oh, <laughs> Cleveland with the basketball. It's back to Smith. Smith back to Cleveland. Cleveland, 48 seconds left. Cozart, Cozart back to Cleveland on the right hand side. Minneapolis works it around. Peyton Smith back it goes to Cozart back to. And Lang, Lang on the corner. Oh, wow. That was a quick tie-up. Um, and that will turn the ball back over to Ellsworth. That was a quick, quick tie-up, guys. 38-7, to 7, 31.6 ticks left here in the third quarter. Rolfs and Ellsworth with the basketball. She will bring it down. She crosses the timeline. It'll be picked up quickly. And... They swing pass over Ross for and she's gonna travel with it. So, so. turnovers tied at six apiece this quarter. Checking in for Ellsworth is number five, as that is Ryan Timbrick. So 18 seconds left. Lyon gets the ball into Cleveland to set this up. Ball goes back to Peyton Smith. Peyton back to Cleveland, Cleveland, back to Cozart, Cozart, back to Cleveland, seven seconds, back to 14, right pass down to Lang, oh, can't get it, great hustle by Lang, though, to keep it going, nice job by Maddie Lang to fight down there for that, uh, and uh, Maddie's mad at herself, but uh, that was a good hustle by Maddie Lang, so. Did she get a steal there at the end? Uh, no, time, time expired. So Lady Lions outscore them 8-5 to five in that quarter. Uh, Ellsworth with a much better quarter. Minneapolis still in control, 38-7. to seven. We'll be right back. Meet is Mexican restaurant, Cisco Gallardo. Hometown Hardware, Ham Barker, and Vicky Coffee. 
Farm Bureau of Financial Services is Matt Pitbull. Sunflower Realty, Lonnie Nelson. Perfect Nail Studio with Alexis Kern. Coming up with an upload pipe with John Blake. Welcome back for fourth quarter action. We will have the running clock. And uh, several underclassmen on the court. So to give you that rundown, Shoop um, and Cozart, uh, Shoop and Kruger, and then uh, number 25, Carly Thrush, and number three, Jordan Peck, and number 20 uh, is Shelby Davidson. And uh, she'll be getting her first action here in the... And oh, good hustle by Ellsworth. They didn't. We didn't even see that one coming. Uh, Peyton Timrick with the layup the other direction. So Ellsworth gets the layup the other direction. Ellsworth picking up the intensity. They still have. Of course, they've gone fairly deep. Ball goes into Carly Thrush back out. Carly back. It goes to Kruger. Kruger looks at the high post, and there's a, it's a tipped away. And great job by. Minneapolis to keep it tied up. It will go back to Ellsworth, though. So checking in for Minneapolis is Hannah Behrens and Lacey Wilson checking in for the Lady Lions. So um, I think I think I know Lacey has played some. I don't know about Hannah Behrens. I'm not sure. Uh, a little. Okay. So um, y- uh, young squad on the floor. Turn of seat drives down. Both teams are young right now. Off the mark, rebounded by Ellsworth. Good hustle by three-point shot is up and off the mark and rebounded by Peck. Peck with a nice rebound. Back hit will come the other direction. In the hands of Thrush with a crossover. Goes back to Wilson. Wilson back to Davidson into Peck. Peck off the glass and oh, so close. But she gets the rebound and the putback. Nice job by Jordan Peck. As she gets the backside rebound and puts it in, and she'll get fouled and go to the line for the and one. Nice job by the sophomore, Jordan Peck. Jordan has the and one here. Shot is up, and it is off the mark, and that'll be a foul on Davidson. It'll go back to Ellsworth. So... um, Back it goes to Ellsworth, back the other direction. 40 to 9, 6 13 in a running clock. As Ross drives Minneapolis in a man. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Barons as she steps in. She'll get fouled. So, you know, looking at our underclassmen, guys, we've got a little bit of height uh, yep. for girls for the underclassmen side. Um, not height, height, but. Um, definitely not five foot four uh, young lady. So we got some girls that are five seven, five eight. So they're, they're not all five foot two and eyes of blue. Huh? <laughs> so first free throw is off the mark. Second one is up and good. As she uh, gets, I think maybe her fourth or fifth point of the night. Oh, good anticipation by Ellsworth. It'll stay with Minneapolis. Um, Barron's a five foot seven freshman or sophomore from Minneapolis. She gets it into Thrush, and it'll stay with Minneapolis. to out of bounds. So Barron's in bounds. Gets it into Thrush. Thrush with the basketball, and she get trapped back to Barron's. Barron's. Oh, good hustle by. Uh, post goes nice. Barron's dribbled right through that uh, double team right there, Dale, and did a nice job of. Yeah, uh, did a really nice job of uh, splitting that double team, and then uh, they sent one more at her, and that was one too many. But uh, her initial move was really a was really a good move. Thrush for the basketball into Davidson off the glass and good. Nice job, Shelby Davidson, as uh, she gets her first points of the night, and nice job of dropping it down low. And looking, listening to the other other commentary, I guess that's her first career varsity bucket. So, uh, the drive in on the left hand side is Ryan Timbering for Ellsworth, as she gets the drive on the left hand side. So, 
uh, Barron's in the basketball. Back to Lacey Wilson. Lacey, and she'll get fouled there by uh, Turnip Seed. So, so I know that uh, um, Shelby Davidson has played some varsity match. I just didn't realize that was her first varsity points. So, Barron's to inbounds. They get it into Peck. Peck back to Thrush. Thrush. Picks up her dribble, gets it back to Lacey Wilson. Lacey, Lacey um, into Davidson, down low to Peck, and can't get it, and just gets a rebound, puts it back up. Way to go, Jordan Peck and Davidson both battling down there, and Ellsworth finally comes away with it, but that's exciting, guys. Good rebounding by both the young ladies battling down low. Ellsworth. Um, takes the shot, and that's Peyton Timrick as she gets the bucket to fall. So 42-14, to Manaps is going to call a timeout to get a couple new players in as they will call a timeout to talk about this, and we'll be, uh, it's just a 30-second timeout. We'll take a real quick break with them. 42-14, to 257 left to go in the ball game. We'll be right back. Bar Bureau Financial Services with Matt Pickrell. Sunflower Realty, Monty Nelson. El Hoyo 19 Restaurant with Ed and Brian Bowles. The Bennington State Bank in Minneapolis and Salina. But no place like home quilt shop with Carolee Austin. LaGrange Supply with Scott Mortimer. Designs with Sherry Bertrand. Welcome back to Minneapolis High School. 42 to 14, Lady Lions uh, well in control. 2.57 left to go in a running clock here. And into the ballgame is number 15 for the Minneapolis Lady Lions, and that's Makaya Darane. And I didn't see a turnover at the top. Uh, yeah, so they can let that go. <laughs> so I had my head down for a second and was looking at some things. So, so. so. Uh, Ellsworth with the basketball gets it across and great drive by number 12 uh, Greta Klein and uh, she puts a move on Darnay and she drives right in and there's going to be oh <laughs> uh, foul's going to be called on Carly Thrush with the uh, forehand, forearm shiver <laughs> Ellsworth's going to call a timeout. So, 42 to 16. Ellsworth is outscoring the Lady Lions here in this quarter, but we will uh, just take a break and hear a word from our sponsors. You're listening to CityLink TV Minneapolis. These live video broadcasts are sponsored in part by Chuck's Collision. When the potentially inevitable occurs and your vehicle needs repair for body or glass, remember Chuck's Collision. They'll bring you satisfaction in your automotive restoration needs. Contact Chuck at 785-392-2774. Chuck's Collision is located at 1556 K106 Highway. See American Family Insurance Agent Scott Osherman for all your insurance coverage under one roof. The Scott Osherman Agency with locations in Minneapolis and Belleville proudly supporting the Minneapolis High School Lions. Welcome back to Minneapolis High School. Ellsworth Bearcats had the basketball as uh, we have about two minutes left to go in this ballgame. 42-16, to 16, Lady Lions with a, just a nice overall ballgame tonight. And they've got their bench in right now as Ellsworth will drive. Conrad gets it down low off the mark, rebounded by Thrush. Thrush will come back the other direction. Thrush back to Kruger. Kruger into Davidson. Down to Darinay. Darinay. Back out it goes to Barron's, up no good, and that's going to be rebounded by Ellsworth. Nice look by Lady Lions, can't get it to fall. 137 here to go in this ball game. Conrad with the basketball, uh, gets back out to Rolfs. Rolfs will drive, pulls it back out. Uh, looks down to Rodriguez in the low block, off the glass, and good is just a little hook down low. Uh, a running hook, I guess you'd say. 
Ball goes, oh. And that's going to be out of bounds off Minneapolis. So that'll be Ellsworth basketball. So 11 turnovers this half for the Lady Lions. So Ellsworth even. The six for the Dreadheads. 42 to 18, Lady Lions with the control here. 50 seconds left. Ellsworth with the basketball at the top. Get it back over to Conrad. Conrad down low, rebound. It's then blocked by Davidson and stolen away. Back it goes into the hands of Thrush. Thrush, and that's another turnover by the Lady Lions. So. 25 seconds left here in this ball game. 42 to 18. Ellsworth gets it down into the hands of Klein. Klein back to Rawls for three. And that's their first three point of the night. And she hits one from the outside to make this 42 to 21. That should probably be our score to finish this thing. And then we're going to drive out of bounds, and that's going to be your ball game. So, Minneapolis Lady Lions. Get a nice win tonight at home, 42 to 21. Uh, Ellsworth definitely does outscore us in that quarter by a score of 14 to four. Uh, but nice job in the Minneapolis Lady Lions to come away with the victory tonight. We'll take a real quick break and be back with some stats. Your final score here in Minneapolis: Lady Lions 42, Ellsworth 21. Wilson Family Funeral, our family serving your family. Todd, Shelley, Landon, and Reese Wilson proudly support the activities of the Minneapolis Junior Senior High School students. Go Minneapolis Lions! Autotech has provided reliable service to the local community since 2002 and are proud supporters of the MJSHS Lions. Gary Keating and Dave Sweat lead an outstanding team of mechanics who tackle repairs on all makes and models of automobiles and also provide competitive pricing for oil changes. Authorized dealers for Jasper engines and transmissions. Don't forget our lineup of used cars. The Messenger Clothing Company's locations in Minneapolis and Salina. Designers of custom clothing for your team, business, group, or event. Screen printing and embroidery. We feature online design and ordering for your convenience. <coughs> Contact us at 785-823-7752 or by email at sales at messengerclothingcompany.com. For all your customer clothing printing needs today, go Minneapolis Lion. Looks like we're going to have uh, senior night recognition for wrestling. We just have one senior. Is that? Uh, no. Okay, there we go. Just going to say we had. I thought we had a couple. Two. Yeah. So, um, so Dale, I'll let you handle this one. So. And the, and the it's exciting. I just thought of there. The Lions are going to host Sub State Wrestling. Oh, really? Yeah. Two weeks, wow. Two weeks from this, this past weekend. Good evening. Well, that is exciting. Tonight we'd like to recognize our senior wrestlers. So. Well, the number of senior wrestlers is small. The impact of these two have on the wrestling team is not. Their leadership, determination, and hard work have been an incentive for the entire team as well as a beneficial to their own athletic achievements. Both of these wrestlers know so. the to be dedicated to both seniors, uh, they're going to recognize here. I will give you names here in a second. I, I believe Keon Bacchus is the first senior being recognized. Uh, so, Keon is the son of Kenny and Melissa Bacchus. He has been an active member of the Lions wrestling team for all four years. Listen to Terry and give some PA announcements here. Kim, like the future wrestlers, know that wrestling is hard. You will lose matches, but don't give up. Those losses are lessons, and the wins will come. Congratulations, Keon, and best of luck. Congratulations, Keon Bacchus. Adam Reed. Adam Reed is your other senior. Adam plans 
for future And duties. welcome back here to Minneapolis Hall of Fame where the Lady Lions are the aircraft at 500. They uh, uh, the the made a the 22-21 win over the Ellsworth Lady Bearcats. Bear we wish you good luck, Adam, and thank you for your contributions to the team. Congratulations to both senior wrestlers. Adam Reed and Keon Backus uh, for their dedication to the wrestling program. And that's pretty exciting for those two young men. Uh, great job for these two senior wrestlers. So, H, I'll turn it over to you for some stats, sir. One more thing about wrestling. The Lions will be at Hillsboro, I believe, this weekend for regional. Uh, wrestling. They've got things kind of turned around differently this year for tournaments. Uh, yeah, if I understood it right, they uh, wrestled the districts this last week up at uh, yeah. Beloit, uh, and then they go to a regional at Hillsboro, and then I guess they're calling it, what, a sub-state? Yeah. Uh, the, the following week, which actually... From, here. Which will be here, yeah. I just now understand, and if I also understand correctly, that's basically almost like the first round of state. Yeah. Uh, that they're now having uh, with the, all the COVID things going on, they've uh, you know changed the format around just yeah. very, very much like we did for volleyball this uh, this fall with uh, reducing the number of teams that actually will show up at state. Well, uh, throughout the season, they have reduced the number of teams and or individuals at tournaments, and that has had a direct effect on how this uh, postseason right. is being played. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, uh, the final stats for tonight. Uh, the, the late lines were led in scoring by Courtney Forte with uh, 14. Uh, Ellsworth basically held her scoreless in the second half. Uh, Cameron Cleveland came in uh, right behind her in double figures with uh, 12. Uh, Elena Cozart finished the game with three. And we had several young ladies with two each. Those being Shelby Davidson, Maddie Krueger, Maggie Shue, and Jordan Pat. Uh, Ellsworth uh, had two young ladies that uh, scored six each, uh, Ryan Tenbrink and Natalie Waltz. Uh, Peyton Tenbrink finished the game with four, Greta Klein and Alyssa Rodriguez with two each, and K Kylan Turnipseed with one. Uh, free throw wise, the Lady Lions were one for one in the second half to finish the game five for five. Uh, Ellsworth was two for four in the second half, finishing the game four for eight. How many rebounds did you have for Courtney? Uh, I have us for 23 total and 17 for them. For Courtney, how many did you have? Uh, Forte, I had her for eight rebounds. Not quite a double double. That's pretty good for three quarters. Not bad. Uh, but like I said, it was interesting to me that, uh, you know, she, here she had 14 at halftime. And uh, even though she only played the one quarter of the second half, uh, you know, was, was scoreless for those uh, eight minutes. Yep. Uh, we got uh, each outscored to make the five third quarter, and they outscored us 14 to four in the final stands with that running clock. They had an 11 0 run there to end the game. Uh, rebounds total. We have rebounded to them 14 to 9 in the second half for a 28 16 total advantage. Uh, turnovers, we had 12 in the second half compared to their 7, so that was a big turnaround. But they still had one more than us for the game 22 21. So the Lady Lions are now 8 and 8, 50% on the season, and will uh, host Southeast of Saline, I think it is, Saturday or this Friday. Uh, player of the game sponsored by the Wilson Family Funeral Home. Going to go with Courtney Forte and her buzzer beater play up there at the end of the second quarter. Again, that's sponsored by the Wilson Family Funeral Home. Player of the game go with the uh, co players Courtney Forte, 14 points, 8 rebounds. Cameron Cleveland, 12 points, and how many rebounds? And uh, let me see her. Uh, I have her for three rebounds. That's pretty good for a point guard. All right, well, let's bring this game to a close. Let's we'll switch everything over to get ready for the boys. Hope you've enjoyed watching at your home or on the go on CityLinkTV.com. We'll be right back. <laughs>